International African American Museum is slated to open in 2021 here in Charleston. In this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups, the museum CEO, Michael Moore, and former Charleston Mayor, Joe Raleigh, give me an exclusive update on the museum. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, download the free Quentin's Close-Ups app, and listen to this interview on Thursday on iHeartRadio. Well, Mayor Raleigh and Michael Moore, it's so good to see you all. It's great to be with you, Brandon. Oh, yes, sir. It's always good to see you, sir. Like hardest working man in Charleston. <laughs> oh, thank you. I think you all are. <laughs> Speaking of which, you're working hard on the International African American Museum. And I went back to charlestontoday.com, and they have a list of what's going on so far. The construction is planned, is planned to be getting made. The museum needs to raise an extra $10 million, in addition to its original fundraising goal of $75 million, which is surpassed last year. They hope to have the doors open in 2021. And of course, the museum's mission reads, it is likely that all African Americans can trace an ancestor who arrived through Charleston. When you think of the International African American Museum in 2019, where does your mind go to? Well, first of all, we're so proud of it. It'll be, it'll be a great gift to this region and to our country and the world. And it is an international museum. Uh, so it's serving not only our community, but, but the world. And uh, so it's very, uh, a very large institution. And so our costs have continued to climb. So the numbers you just cited, we see in our budget go up to very challenging time uh, in the construction industry here. So we're raising, still raising some more money. And our goal is to break ground in October. And we expect to go to city council in July uh, with a proposed contract to begin construction. So we're on go. We just had raised more money than we thought, but uh, we're going to get it done. How much money are we talking about now? Well, I think that we're uh, looking at um, probably approaching $90 million uh, overall, and uh, maybe a little bit more. But we, we are not going to compromise quality. So we've got to work harder, but the this museum and the people that we honor deserve a high quality, world class institution. So that's why we've opted to, rather than cut corners, cut back, we just go raise the money we need to do, do it first class. And you know, I, I um, you know, to your question, where, where does my mind go? You know, I, I actually think, you know, we, we believe that my great, 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 great grandmother landed on the site of our museum. And so I, um, you know, every time I walk on the site, I sort of try to engage with what she must have experienced, what she must have felt, what all those who landed there must have felt. And I feel so proud to be involved in this project that, you know, 200 plus years after the last person landed there, that we'll have an opportunity to build this museum, to finally tell their stories and to... Uh, really pay homage and pay respects to their sacrifices and to their contributions in uh, in building the, the, the city, the low country, and, and this country. So, as the mayor said, it's going to be a world-class institution. We've been able to pull together literally a world-class team of, of professionals, of architects, of designers, our staff, and, uh, you know, we, we are taking this challenge really seriously. And, you know, I think everybody that's associated with it, led by kind of the, the, the vigor that Mayor Riley brings on a daily basis to this task, we are focused on just making this uh, just a really special, world-class place that shines very brightly on this city and, and on our country. Contributions, how many more do you need right now? Well, we're, we're, we're working. I mean, I think, I think, you know, about $5 million. Okay. Um, is sort of what we'll need. We're not entirely sure because it won't be until, um, you know, early June, late May, when our construction manager comes back and gives us all the specifics. We're, we're continuing to work hard. We're continuing to raise money. And, um, you know, but it's it probably somewhere in that neighborhood. Would you? Yeah, and, and we've been engaged in a very vigorous value engineering uh, effort with our contractors. Uh, to make sure that we are as cost effective as we can and we find ways to uh, create efficiencies without uh, eliminating any quality. So we, we've got some more to raise, but we are 
We worked on it. I work on it every day. Right. And, uh, and very generous uh, companies and people in this region and around the country uh, have uh, contributed. And we've got some a very good announcements to make in the next two weeks about important and generous donations. And you earlier talked about specifics. What are they right now? In terms of the museum? Yes, sir. Well, we are, you know, working on fine-tuning the museum experience, fine-tuning the architecture, making sure that the building um, works to tell the stories and to house the sort of the museum experience that we're trying to build. A lot of the design work, you know, we Mayor Riley announced his vision for this museum way back in 2000. There have been countless sort of community meetings and efforts, particularly in the early part of the early decade, 15 years or so. Um, after that, we've been kind of nose to the grindstone over the last three or four years trying to raise the money, but um, we've been executing against a lot of the inputs that came from the community. And, uh, and now, now that we have staff, now that you know, we are getting down to the wire, just fine-tuning, making sure that the museum experience is as powerful um, as it can be, that the stories are the right stories being told and presented in the most compelling way, uh, making sure that the grounds um, are going to be just both beautiful but also meaningfully designed. Um, there's a lot of history. We will have hundreds of artifacts in our museum, but for us, the most powerful artifact will really be the grounds because that's where, you know, where so many folks took their first steps. And um, so it's, it's uh, you know, and also spending time building our staff and yeah. building this team. We've had to be very careful about um, sort of the, the pace of hiring to make sure that it matches the construction cycle and it, you know, gets us to where we need to do. Um, we don't want to hire people too late because we've got a lot of work to do, but we don't want to hire people too early and sort of spin our wheels um, until we can get work done. So um, a lot is going on. Again, a lot of in the, on the fundraising side, one of the things in terms of fundraising, we are really excited about the growth of our membership program, yeah. our charter membership program. Uh, people can go to our website and can look. There's a variety of different levels to match um, anyone's sort of interest and, and capacity. You can get in for as little as $25. And, um, and there are other, um, there's a leadership circle where you can, people have given very, very generous $25,000 gifts, but that becoming a charter member really is a once, um, you know, once in a lifetime kind of a proposition that prior to opening, um, you can become a charter you'll member. You'll always be a charter member. You'll always be a, yeah. a charter member. So, yeah. so it's time to get on the, get in on the ground floor. That's it. So how do I donate if I want to do this? Well, there's a couple different ways, you know, if for those who are, um, online and most of us are you can just go to iaamuseum.org slash membership and it will show you the membership levels and take your credit card information you can join you could um, you know send a check you could you know but but really i think online is probably the most efficient way at this point you talked earlier about input what more input do you want from the community at this juncture i mean I'll start and then we'll sure, you. Sure. I mean, I think, you know, we, it's important that we build this institution in a way that it connects directly and powerfully with the community. Um, we're building an international museum. The stories are beyond just Charleston. Um, but, you know, community input is very, very important. And so, um, you know, we have just over the last six months or so, been at a point where we can hire community engagement staff. And at this point of the nine or 10 people we have on staff, two of them are focused on community engagement, different different angles of community engagement. So it's a, it's a responsibility that we take seriously. We launched our first um, sort of community event um, in February at the library. We will have those periodically. We will be creating um, opportunities, listening sessions, if you will, for people to come for us to present what we're doing and to get feedback. So it, it, we, we take it seriously. What story still plays in your mind when you think of the vision of this International African American Museum? 
Well, first, I, I am um, I'm struck with the courage that Mayor Riley uh, demonstrated by envisioning this. Um, and you know, I hear stories. Um, you know, how early on people would come up and, you know, do we really need this? Or, you know, how, how's this going to work? Don't we have the plantations? Do we really need a museum? And, and I think he has been steadfast in uh, his leadership of this project in a way that now there is, for the most part, universal sort of acceptance. You know, we're, we're creating something that will shine very, as I mentioned, shine very brightly on the city. Um, you know, this is, it's American history, it's a subset of American history, African American history, but, you know, other than our Native American brothers and sisters, we all have come from other places, and so we simply want to elevate the stories of, of African Americans who came here and um, talk about their experience, their, their, again, their sacrifice, their contributions, and create a place that will be uplifting uh, to all people. I think it will be particularly uplifting to those who share in the stories for, for people of African American descent. But you know, I went to the Holocaust Museum right. a couple of years ago, and, and I was deeply moved and, and touched by the stories and by the history there, just as a human being. And I think all Americans will engage with this project in a similar way. Mayor Riley, I know you've had this vision for many, many years. If your father were alive. What would he think about your interest in this African American museum? Well, I think he would be very proud of it because he would see, as the community I think understands now, this is a, a part of American history that, that Charleston had such a strong role in. And, uh, and going back to the question, Michael, I, I, I often think back to, to those who were brought here uh, against their will and first set foot on American soil here, and how they built this community and helped build our country. It's a, it is a story of courage and determination, of hardship uh, and sacrifice, and, uh, and it's a very uh, inspiring story, a human story, and, uh, and one that we can really tell better here than any place because this is this is a spot we're overlooking as we sit here right. of a harbor where the 882 slave ships came, slave ships came. And, um, and I think, back to an earlier question, we've had community engagement and input from the beginning. We first started with a public announcement. Congressman Clive right. agreed to be the first chair right. of the board. He was our congressman, he's an historian. And so all the meetings were open and assembled a group of, of, uh, of really interested people uh, and, uh, and historians uh, who could help begin to shape the story and then always listening from the citizens to you know, make sure you do this or that, you cover this. And uh, so, the, so the museum will, will be on the sacred side. It will reach back to Africa okay. as we should and understand where those who were brought here came from and the uh, civilization that they helped create in Africa that they were part of. And then, and then the story forward, and, and always some are seen through the lens of the low country, uh, the low country in Charleston, but then tell the national story. Uh, so it's, a, it's going to be extraordinary. What else can I expect from the International African American Museum when I walk in here in 2021? I mean, I think it's going to be an exciting place, a vibrant place. There'll be a lot of energy and, and excitement. There'll be 41 media installations, TV screens or computer screens of various sizes and shapes um, that people will be able to engage in. Um, you know, we'll be telling sort of the broad story of African American history from the first Africans who came to America. Um, up to the present, but then our Center for Family History will allow people to identify their personal strength of that history and to really, again, sort of personalize that story. And so I think that's going to be, be very powerful. Um, you know, we'll have a beautiful gallery called Atlantic Connections facing the water, looking out past Fort Sumter to the Atlantic and Africa over the horizon. And uh, we'll be um, in that gallery, you know, focusing on 
the international component of this story of where people came from um, will sort of seek to add dimension to uh, the people who came here. There is this sort of misconception that you know there was just sort of a monolithic group of people who came here. There were people who came from hundreds of different ethnicities, and languages, and cultures, right. and faiths, and, and so we'll add dimension to that. We'll talk about Africa and um, sort of broadly and, and really dive into the civilizations, the accomplishments. You know, one of the things that I think is really important, um, many African Americans, you know, the, the stories, the history has come about that our, our history sort of started in bondage, started in chains, started in slavery, and it did not. I mean, you know, humanity began in Africa. There were enormous contributions, cultural, scientific, economic, uh, that occurred in Africa, and so we'll seek to unpack that and to present that in ways that we believe will be both informational, but also inspirational to give a sense of the broad history that, um, you know, that, that's there. Um, and there'll be so many things. I mean, the grounds, again, as I mentioned, will be very beautiful. You'll walk through and some will be um, sort of ornamental in the sense that they'll be just sort of beautiful. Other parts of the grounds will be very deeply meaningful. We'll be commemorating history that occurred on the spots there. And so it, it'll be a dynamic place, um, a lot of technology, but, um, and we want to leverage technology in a way that, you know, different people learn differently. Some people want to stand up and read something. Other people would like to perhaps see a video or hear audio of it. We'll have a free smartphone app and we'll have content pushed to your phones that will allow you to engage as you want to engage. We, we want to be careful. We don't want... <clears throat> young people kind of walking around with their phones <laughs> in the phone, but we want to leverage technology in a way that uh, that helps people learn the way they want to learn. Oh, 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 no, I'm saying we're going to have a wonderful educational program, and that will um, be reaching out to the school system uh, in our state and beyond. Uh, we'll develop a curriculum because the average uh, school teacher and the average school history teacher doesn't know this history. They're not, you know, uh, historians, African-American historians. And uh, so we're uh, going to touch the, the children uh, throughout our country, but, but here we will be bringing in school groups, school groups. I mean, a group will be admitted free, so we got educational staff here. And then, you know, uh, the museum sited on Charleston Harbor, which many school children in South Carolina have never seen to begin with or okay. And then to, to learn this history, there's, a, there's a, a problem that we've had in America is that we were never taught this history. And uh, we didn't know it. We didn't know African American history, the truth. And uh, so we'll, that will happen here. And it will be a life changing experience uh, for all who come here. Uh, but particularly our school children, a very rich uh, educational treasure. Unfortunately, one person who won't be here to experience this history is Senator Fritz Hollins. Where are you emotionally with him and his passing? Well, I admire Senator Hollins greatly and uh, believe he was the most uh, significant political leader in our state's history, a history which has seen many extraordinary public servants. But what he accomplished as governor and senator to the benefit of the state and to our country was extraordinary. And uh, he had been ill this past year, so I knew that he was going to be leaving us. Um, but I, uh, so we, we let him go. It was, it was his time. And he, uh, but he, uh, you know, his, um, his legacy will grow. It happens when great people pass away. You have a perspective of time and have an even greater appreciation for their service and leadership. And he was extraordinary. I was, Proud to have a chance to work with him as an elected official, 
uh, for a long time, and, uh, and and to have his friendship be with Lord Lamb. I knew him then. I was a young person and uh, admired him then, and the admiration just continued to grow over the years. Talk to me about that letter. What else would you add to that if you could re rewrite it again to Senator Fritz Hollings? Well, I, I wrote the letter so that it wouldn't be too long. Um, so I, I uh, could have put lots and lots more in it, but I think it, it expressed my feelings of the senator, and, and I wanted him to be reminded of that as he believed in us, and it was so fortunate. Uh, I wrote the letter uh, last Tuesday morning, and it was delivered and delivered to his home Wednesday, and, um, and family read to him. Uh, and he, uh, I understand, was very pleased, so I was able to give him that message, just to remind him of what he meant to me, and what he meant to our state, and what he meant to our country. Yeah. Let me get back to the International African American Museum in 2021. How would this particular museum contribute to African American history in South Carolina? What do you want it to be? in your minds? Well, I want it to be a place of learning and a place of inspiration uh, uh, to everyone who comes. To We will understand a history that we didn't understand before. We will uh, reflect upon the extraordinary courage and determination and resilience that, and more that those who were brought here had and and their contributions to our state, and to um, and to help our country by presenting this museum here to help our country embrace and understand African American history. Our country hasn't done that. We haven't seized the opportunity, and, and we will give that. It's it's seldom that a relatively small city, which Charleston is. Um, and the community and state should give something of huge value to the whole country and beyond. We have that opportunity because in many ways history started here. So we, we create something not for ourselves, uh, we create something for our country and beyond to be a place of excellence. Uh, it would be profoundly moving a place of great learning, and I think a place of great pride for everyone. I, I, I think, um, of course, agree 100% with all that. I, I also, you know, I, my hope is that this will be a place um, that will be inspirational um, to all Americans, but particularly for, for African Americans, for young African Americans. Um, you know, I, I think about uh, I have four young sons, and um, and they've had enormous benefits, um, you know, growing up. But you know, as I mentioned, there are lots of kids throughout the state here who've never even been to the water, never been able to, you know, sort of enjoy, um, you know, the coastline and, and the like. And, and I think there are a lot of young African American children who've never had the benefit of going to an African American history museum. They've not had the chance to see stories and to see people on the walls who look just like them and who have accomplished amazing things. And my hope is that we'll be able to both inform and, and by informing also inspire young people to, you know, maybe readjust the arc of the aspirations of their lives in a, in a way that will, uh, will be productive. Um, you know, there's, a, there's an old African adage that says that until the lion gets its own historian, the history of the hunt will always favor the hunter. And to me what that means is, is that you know, there is the narrative out there and, and um, unless you're the person in the group in power that is telling the stories, that your story is gonna get told by somebody else and it's gonna benefit them. Well, we are adding uh, dimension, adding content to the broad narrative of American history in a way that, again, I think will be uplifting to all. Um, but particularly for you know, 
for young African Americans. And I, and I think, you know, again, when I think about American history broadly, you know, if you care, if someone cares about Abraham Lincoln or George Washington or Ben Franklin, then you also got to care about, you know, Robert Smalls and Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass because it's all a part of our history. And so that's what we hope to do is to elevate uh, this history, African American history, in a way that more fully sort of integrates it into the overall narrative that pays appropriate homage and respect to those who, look, gave every ounce of their life, yeah. liberty, and pursuit yeah. of happiness for this country. And people need to be proud of that. Um, you know, people whose ancestry is connected need to be proud of that, that effort, certainly, and, um, and need to feel or have an opportunity to feel Good about where their lives could go. So it's it's complicated, but uh, you know through education, through telling these stories, through being involved in social justice efforts. Um, you know we hope to be a very vibrant and active institution. Likely we will touch many more people online than people who will have an opportunity to come in. But we also hope that you know, that we'll be able to develop a sense that people will want a pilgrimage to Charleston, that you may be wherever, you may be in Seattle or Dallas or Boston, but people, you know, families will want to, you know what, we got to got to get to Charleston at least once to see this museum and to see the spot where, you know, all of our ancestors likely came through. Well, Mayor Joe Rowley and obviously Michael Moore, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.